JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFT Traders Espresso with me, that is Owen Charles, because today is the 24th of November 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Tuesday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, now then, also just before we jump in into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us, visit us here on jfdbank.com um, and click on the research tab right there on the top. So now jumping into the charts. Now the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. Uh, we had a nice opening gap here to the upside today. Um, the index pushed further north and managed to overcome the um, this key resistance barrier near the 26,057 mark, which previously was the all, uh, the highest point of November. Well, now it is no longer that. So basically now it confirmed the forthcoming higher high and in a way further acceleration to the upside could be possible. And for that, basically my next target could be this 27,251 territory. And if you want to, um, just to kind of remind you what that level was in the past, I've already mentioned that in my previous videos, but just a quick reminder again, that's the um, that's the low, the lowest point of April of 1990, and the highest point of 1991, basically, or should I say, near the highest point of 1991. Um, so basically, we're uh, this is a very nice and uh, interesting level to keep an eye on. Um, of course, don't get me wrong. Looking at this monthly candle, it's quite spectacular. I mean, uh, it seems like it has it has been the biggest gain here so far in one month. Um, so yep. Nikkei is performing quite well, I would say. So um, now let's see if it can continue pushing further north. Uh, if it can, then I said that my next target is the 27,251 territory, which, as you can see, historically has been seen as a very important level. Um, and uh, yep, then we'll take it from there. But um, I'll consider, I'll continue, uh, I'll continue targeting that area if the price stays above this this 26,000. 1057 mark if it falls back below it then maybe we could go uh, for a bit of a correction here to the downside again and then we'll take it from there guys oh but for now everything's looking quite positive here um, as, as long as it stays above this 26,000 and uh, 0, 0, 0, so 26,057 mark um, now jumping into uh, the German DAX now here the index um, uh, yesterday closed in the red um, but to be honest that's still okay because um, overall I mean it's still moving sideways here um, overall I mean from around mid November um, and uh, for now basically what I'm keeping an eye on here is this barrier this this 13,300 level I talked a lot about this and basically looking at the cash index right now we can see that the price is trying to get back uh, into the game here and basically it's now close to this key resistance barrier now um, of course as of, if you if you remember from the even from the around the mid month I was telling you that that there could be a possibility of seeing this one or, or should I say taking this one as a potential bullish flag so far everything is kind of working out according to that um, however we need that confirmation break first above this uh, 13,300 level in order to get a little bit more excited with higher levels so keep your eyes on that one guys um, jumping into DXY another index but this one is a dollar index and yesterday we had a, um, a bit of a roller coaster right here on the US dollar so initially it was dropping lower I have to admit I was a little bit more skeptical and bearish about it 
However, um, so during the European session, uh, the uh, the index was moving lower. However, somewhere mid uh, mid US session, it kind of reversed sharply back up. Uh, of course, the whole kind of uh, coronavirus uh, vaccine uh, kind of uh, issue um, is kind of or should I say topic is kind of uh, working here uh, in favor for the um, for the for the markets for the equity markets of course the bringing the, the risk on environment back into the table however uh, don't get me wrong guys I mean yes uh, all that sounds good and uh, all the headlines are kind of helping the uh, helping certain assets to move higher however um still be very careful because again it's still in the early everything's still in the early stages and there's a lot of obstacles on the way so um once the market participants kind of start uh kind of um, putting more emphasis on that and instead of uh just blindly following headlines then yep in a way uh everything could uh, kind of uh, normalize again and by normalize i mean uh basically the whole fear of the pandemic could come back but again for now it seems that everything is kind of working okay um so let's see if um how this is going to play out but let's say from the technical side on dxy we can see that um and i've talked about these two levels the uh, 92.24 uh, level and the 92.61 zone so i talked about this and what i was saying that i need to see that uh daily candle staying outside of this uh, either either above the 92.61 or below the 92.24 zone so we didn't really get that we just got these false breakouts both ways you can see that um, but still the daily candle remained inside this in this area so and today we're seeing that uh, that the, uh, the not the pair sorry the index remained inside this and today we're seeing that the index continues to be in this area so for now basically I'm, I'm just neutral on this one I'm just gonna observe the price action because again it's it's a bit of a difficult one here so if we get a nice good push above the 92.61 zone and we get a nice daily candle making its way above it then yes of course higher levels could be met however still I would need to see that uh, push above the uh, the 21 day EMA here shown as the yellow line and then yep higher levels could be met but at the moment guys um, it's a bit of a tricky one here so let's be very careful uh, and keep your eyes on this so wait for that daily candle to get kind of um, either above or stay above the 92.61 zone or uh, drop and stay below the 92.24 level now gold um, of course the yesterday's pop in in dollar uh, didn't really work well here for gold however um, as I've mentioned to you guys uh, yesterday and, and uh, last week as well that what I needed to see in order to aim for some lower areas I needed to see a nice good drop below this 1860 zone I needed to see that daily candle remaining below this area we got that and uh, yep not only that we actually overcame the the lowest point of September as well as well near the 1849 zone and we continue to push further south uh, my next target was this um, 1818 level which uh, we almost managed to reach today uh, but don't get me wrong I mean the day has just started so uh, let's see if we can actually eventually hit that uh, get an, a better hit of that um, and uh, yep if that gets broken then my next target is this 200 day EMA guys so for now, um, everything's looking quite interesting here uh, for, for the sellers. Um, of course, the next target is this 1818 level again. Um, and then if that fails to provide good support, then my next target is the um, this 200 day EMA or uh, this little area of support right here, uh, marked by the low of the 16th of July. And that's roughly around the 1795 zone. So something for you guys to keep in mind here. So um, in terms of the upside, well, pretty straightforward. I push back above the 1877 territory could do the trick for more buyers WTI oil so looking at this beautiful picture and look at this basically it worked out nicely I talked about this idea um, this week last week and basically uh, what I was saying that if we get a push above the 42.44 level yes I'll aim for some higher levels my next target is the 43.04 area which is the uh, previous highest point of November as you can see now we've created a new high for November and we've managed to reach my target here the 43.75 level 
which is marked by the highest point of August. So uh, now the big question here is, can this continue pushing further north? Because it's quite an, a, a tricky level here. Um, we are at a very important spot. So of course, don't get me wrong, we're not at the yearly this year's highs uh, we still we still have a, a kind of a decent uh, amount to go here but uh, first of all we're very at a very important level here this highest point of August and uh, if we get a break above that this 43.75 territory we see that daily candle staying above it well I mean then yep uh, we could start looking at uh, some further upside so um again for now guys I'm, I'm still quite bullish on this one however i need to see that daily candle uh remaining above uh, above this 43.75 territory in order to uh get a little bit more excited with the upside so keep your eyes on that one in terms of the downside i will start looking at lower levels from around 41.46 territory now the the most important <laughs> for some probably um, the crypto world and Ethereum. I mean Ethereum and Ripple. Those two have just been moving nicely to the upside. I'm not picking up on Bitcoin for now because again Bitcoin uh, did have already its its moves. Um, so <clears throat> basically, it was um, a very interesting indication that uh, when Bitcoin started popping higher, uh, other cryptos were kind of lagging, and uh, and the the biggest lagger here, the Ripple, uh, not this one here, but I'll jump into that one. They kind of picked up. Uh, the moves and also exploded to the upside. So looking at Ethereum for now, um, we saw a nice move push higher here. Yes, we over overcame that 600 mark. And uh, now the big question here, um, where is it going to find its resistance? Now, as I mentioned to you previously, this 637.07 territory, that's what I'm looking at right now because that's the, um, let me just go back into history here a little bit. <clears throat> that's basically the high of this area right here the highest point of june 2018 so that's a very good important target um so far it's uh, it seems like one-way traffic so it could continue pushing further north but like i said i'll be very careful near the 637 territory because if it provides good resistance I mean, we maybe we could see a bit of a correct correction here to the downside because don't forget that overall we're still uh trading above this short-term tentative upside support line taken from the Low of the 3rd of November and in a way given that we the price is already kind of way far from uh, from that uh, from this upside line um, yep it's gonna be um, an interesting one so basically for now uh, let's see how all this is gonna play out but um, yeah guys for now be very careful and uh, let's see how all this is gonna uh, play out here but um, yeah my next target is this 637 territory and the um, and then I'll then I'll take it from there. Um, now jumping into Ripple, of course, Ripple is had exploded nicely to the upside today as well. It, this morning it continued to rally and reached the 0.78 territory, and then I mean now you can see that it retraced a little bit. So maybe um, uh, maybe. We could go for a bit of a correction here to the downside however for now um it's not really i think this has already been the correction so it might continue pushing further north again and to be honest looking at this picture i mean uh oh, wow that's now that's an explosion comparing it it's something it reminds us of course the december 2017 and the january 2018 here so yep we uh and also it looks similar to this uh, this little pop here uh, back in september of of 2018 so basically we had a nice move higher um, this is by the way by the way speaking of September 2018 let me just grab this very quickly so um, we've managed to reach the area of the highest point of September of 2018 and that's roughly around the 0 0.79 13 mark so basically this morning we already had a nice pop so don't get me wrong this might push a little bit further north, maybe test this area again, maybe even uh, test the 0 0.79 uh, 13 zone, which is like I said, the highest point of September. And then, yep, 
that's where it could become a little bit more interesting after because um, if it provides good resistance then well I mean we could see maybe a bit of it of a retracement back down so so for now basically what I'm keeping an eye on here is this key resistance area because in a way it could push further north but if it struggles with this area here um, maybe we'll finally see that little correction here to the downside now jumping into a few pairs AUD JPY and look at this look at this beautiful move here now um, first of all I mean what I was talking about previously was that um, in order to aim for some higher levels on this one not only did we need to see a break of this uh, downside line but also a push um, a push above this 76.77 territory so which is marked by the high of the 16th of November um, you can see that we're approaching that area so yep of course the the whole risk uh, risk uh, on environment uh, right now is kind of uh, helping uh, the equity markets see um, this pair for example I mean uh, the, the commodity linked currency which is the Australian dollar and the uh, safe haven yen I mean here in this balance here in this in this balance between them I mean it's you can see that yes the pair is moving higher um, now like I said we'll keep an eye on this 76.77 territory um, a nice good pop above it yep could open the door towards the current highest point of November near the 77.10 um, and if that gets broken well I mean the forthcoming higher high would be confirmed and the higher levels could be met so be very careful on this one but um, yep let's see how all this is going to play out now, in terms of the downside, um, 70, uh, 75.48 zone, that's what I'm keeping an eye on. Um, certainly, else I could start looking at some lower areas already earlier if we get a drop below the 75.76 zone. So let's let's keep an eye basically on this little territory right here. If we get a drop below it, then yes, further declines are possible. USDJPY um, had a nice beautiful move here. Of course, um, weaker yen um, and stronger dollar. Yesterday, that combination gave us a result of this. Um, the pair traveled higher it uh, tested the 21 day EMA and look at this I mean it uh, the 21 day EMA is currently providing good uh, resistance mm, and uh, basically for now uh, for now um, what we're gonna what we're gonna do here is we're still gonna aim for some higher levels now uh, what I talked about previously that if we get a pop above the 104 zone then yes we could aim for some higher levels here uh, then I will my next target will be the 21 day EMA which as you can see the re that's the reason why I'm, I, I always talk about this EMA and uh, but if it pushes above this 21 day EMA again then my next target is the 104.95 zone right here um, or in a way you could round it up towards the 105 territory but 104.95 zone that's what initially I'm going to be aiming for of course slightly above that we do have this downside line taken from the high of the uh, 24th of March and uh, uh, in a way for now um, if um, for now of course the uh, this move higher is still considered to be as a temporary correction before another possible leg of selling however uh, let's be very careful because on the other hand here we have ourselves a new uh, established a new upside support line here taken from the low of the 9th of November and in a way this could continue to provide some support for now now, uh, GBP uh, USD. So, of course, yesterday the pound accelerated nicely to the upside. So, uh, yesterday we had a nice pop in the in the British pound. Of course, due to uh, some comments. Um, uh, some comments on the uh, around sorry, in the, on the on the Brexit topic that there's a lot of positivity that there's a, a potential um, kind of a, a potential deal could be struck already I mean 95 percent of the deal is uh, already agreed but um, not everything is that clear and you can see that the the reason uh, the reason why because again the pair uh, the GBP USD did decline after it didn't stay at these highs uh, it did correct uh, uh, and at one point it did kind of wipe out all the gains that it made in that short period of period of time um, of course the correction came mainly uh, during the US session um, so yep when the dollar kind of strengthened and um, that's the result here but still on on the positive note uh, the pair remained above all these levels that I talked about yesterday the 1.3287 and the 1.3313 so in other words uh, for now uh, we're gonna 
uh, still remain somewhat positive. Um, oh, by the way, as well, if you um, um, if you want to have a read about the uh, the whole uh, this this Brexit uh, this Brexit thing that happened yesterday, so you can have a, have a check uh, on our website and later on my our research page um, in about maybe two hours, something like around like oh, I would say even one and a half hours. Uh, you can jump in there and uh, check the the piece uh, material uh, that will be prepared. So. Uh, so yeah, uh, on that topic, of course, and like I said, yeah, then we'll have a uh, we can you can have a bit of a, a better uh, uh, view of what's happening. But coming back to GBPUSD, um, you can see that yes, the pair remained above the certain uh, key resistance levels um, for now, as long as it stays above this area. Well, to be honest, I'm going to continue targeting the upside, guys. So uh, yep, for now that's the game plan. Uh, so let's see how this is going to play out. If it starts dropping back below the 1.3287 zone, then, well, maybe it's not really ready to uh, move higher yet. Now, GBPCHF, an interesting one. So this one's looking quite positive, and you can see why uh, we're approaching key resistance, which is the current highest point of November, near the 1.2203 level. Um, in order to aim for higher levels, a push-up of that area is required. Um, then, of course, we do have another obstacle here in the way the 1.22. 15 or should I say 60 1.2260 zone uh, marked by the highest point of um, of June of this year and if that is just seen as a temporary obstacle then my next target here is much higher um, which is the this key this uh, this 1.2530 zone which acted as a very nice area of support previously now it could take take a role of resistance so again like I said we are approaching uh, quite an important level so let's see how this is going to play out in terms of the downside, um, well, I mean, maybe a drop somewhere below the 1.21 territory right here could do the trick for more sellers. Now, uh, Euro against Turkish Lira, a look at this beautiful move. So yesterday I talked about this and basically what I was saying that keep watching this 9.4691 uh, level um, or in a way you could round it up towards the 9.47 territory. So if that 9.47 territory continues to provide resistance, then we, this is the scenario that could work out. So for now, this is, this is what I'm keeping an eye on. Um, and uh, if, but if the pair somehow manages to climb above this 9.46, uh, 47 territory, then this area up until the 9.6882 will be somewhat of a neutral one for me because uh, I need to see a break above the 9.6882 in order to aim for some higher levels again. And finally, Euro USD. So again, uh, of course, the stronger dollar uh, gave its weight here on this pair, um, or should I say, made its weight uh, on this pair, and uh, you can see that yes, the pair tra traveled higher initially, but then yep, ended up uh, moving lower and uh, uh, moving lower and actually dropping to this key level, the 1.1795 territory. I talked about this area and uh, what I was saying that in order to aim for some lower levels, we need to see a nice good drop below it. But as you can see, this area acted as a nice, very, uh, very nice area of support. So just kind of points out uh, the significance of this area, uh, this hurdle right here. So that's why for now, obviously for the downside, if you want to aim for some lower levels, wait for a drop below the 1.1795 territory, and then we could consider some further declines. In terms of the upside, we need to see a push above the 1.1880 territory in order to aim for the upside. So, yep, keep your eyes on that one, guys. Again, it's the same analysis, guys, on your dollar, but uh, yeah, it could be quite interesting later on because the more it kind of moves sideways here, the the bigger the uh, the breakout could be. So I hope you found it useful, guys. I'll have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Thank you very much for joining in. If you want to catch my video later on, my trader's tea time is always 14.15 GMT. For now, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful trading day. Stay safe, guys, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.